What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of The Breakdown. And in this edition, I'm going to be breaking down the matchup between the number one seeded and number one overall seed, Houston Rockets, and the number eight seed, Minnesota Timberwolves. The Timberwolves are coming into the this playoffs after a 14-year layoff from the playoffs, so I know their fans are pretty excited about that. And the Houston Rockets are coming into these playoffs as the number one overall seed in the Western Conference after Golden State the last three seasons has been the number one seed. But thus far in the regular season, um, um, the Houston Rockets have taken the Golden State uh, Warriors crown as, in terms of being uh, the number one seed. Um, but let's get right into it. Um, th this, is, this, this series on paper, it looks very, very interesting, but I'm going to show you why, and I'm going to talk about why I don't think this series is going to last much past five games. On a safe bet, I would say five games, but... This series could even be a sweep, and it's, it's to me it's not it's not necessarily that the Minnesota Timberwolves are a bad team at all, um, but I just don't think stylistically I don't think stylistically from from a standpoint of their coach versus the uh, the Houston Rockets coach and Mike D'Antoni. I don't think that stylistically they match up with the Houston Rockets, and I don't and that's why I don't think that this series is going to go much past five games, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if it was a sweep. Um, also, with, 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 um, now, now, now with the Minnesota Timberwolves, I want to keep, keep in mind, they're not a typical eight seed. So that is kind of what is intriguing about this matchup is they're not a typical eight seed. They were around the, four, the three or four seed before Jimmy Butler got hurt. And then when Jimmy Butler got hurt, they did kind of slide down to that eighth seed and barely kind of got their way into the playoffs, but now they are here. Um, but I think that this is going to be a very, very tough matchup, first of all, for the Minnesota Timberwolves because their coach um, is more of a defensive coach, and he's not so much offensive, and the Houston Rockets have proven this year that they have gotten a little bit better on defense, and their coach is an offensive coach. And one of the reasons why I, I don't think that the Minnesota Timberwolves are going to last much long, last that long in this series is because the Houston Rockets, they run the pick and roll and they, they run the pick and roll with James Harden and Chris Paul. And all season, those guys have been making the right decisions out of that pick and roll. And in the film session later, we're going to go into the film and dig in deep, deeper into this as to what Minnesota is going to be looking at all series long. And I just don't see them being able to uh, stop it. So, Whatever hair the coach uh, for Minnesota Timberwolves has left, uh, he may not have any uh, left by, by the end of the series because he's going to be pulling his hair out trying to figure out how to stop this pick and roll. And it is a dangerous uh, pick and roll that can lead to lots of different uh, results as well. Um, but uh, Minnesota is a team that uh, they're, coming into the, they're coming into these playoffs with um, – uh, they're coming. They're coming into these playoffs after after 14 year absence. Uh, so they are quite a. Uh, they are quite a bit of a younger team. Uh, they do have some guys with playoff experience. I guess I would say Jeff Teague is probably the guy that comes to mind, probably with the most playoff experience on the team. And then outside of that, you do have Jimmy Butler, who 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 does have playoff experience. But you take a look. You take a look. On the other side of the Houston Rockets, everybody's got playoff experience, um, years of playoff experience. So I think that that favors Houston uh, to get this series over with quickly. Um, I, I like Houston and the coaching advantage because they're 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 going to put up more points. Um, and then I like I, I like Houston in this series also um, from a from a defensive standpoint. Uh, not saying that they're better than Minnesota on defense, but I think that. By them adding uh, somebody like PJ Tucker, um, that, that that is going to do wonders for them, and also adding Chris Paul this season, uh, that that's going to do wonders for them on the defensive end in this particular series as well. Uh, I do want to note that Luke Mbamute, I believe he is out this series as he uh, dislocated his shoulder in the last game of the regular season. Um, but if I jump back to the other side, uh, Minnesota, uh, they are an interesting team on paper. They, they, they do have the talent. I mean, they've got Jimmy Butler. They've got Jeff Teague. They've got Tyus Jones. I believe he comes off the bench. You've got Andrew Wiggins. 
you've got uh, Carl Anthony Towns, and then you and then you you also have uh, Jamal Crawford, who does have playoff experience. He he, I forgot to add him in there. He is a guy that has playoff experience, and you've got Taj Gibson. So those are the main key players for the Minnesota Timberwolves. So on paper, they have a formidable team to stand up to the Houston Rockets. But I think where this series is uh, broken down is you have to get into the styles. And sometimes, like they say in boxing, styles make fights. And it's no different in basketball and football. Styles make fights. And I just don't believe that the, that the Minnesota Timberwolves style of play is going to be able to keep up with the Houston Rockets style of play. Also, um, with Houston, they've got so many weapons. Uh, they've got James Harden to start off with, who's probably going to win the MVP more than likely. They've got Chris Paul, who has those two have proven everybody wrong, and they have made this thing work uh, over the course of the season because I was not a believer when I first heard last summer that Chris Paul was going to the Houston Rockets. I didn't think that it was going to work, but it has, and, and they've proved me wrong. They've got Ryan Anderson, who's a stone-cold shooter. Uh, they've got uh, Eric Gordon. They've got Joe Johnson, who they picked up uh, off waivers uh, in, uh, the, this season. They've got, uh, uh, they've got um, Gerald Green, who came over to them. Uh, they've got P.J. Tucker, who has done wonders for them on the defensive end. Um, Luke and Bob Mute, don't expect him to play, but he, he's an addition that, that, that uh, the Houston Rockets have also gotten. They've got uh, Clint Capella. They've got a veteran in uh, Nene. They've got Tariq Black also that comes off the bench. So this team is very, very deep. There's probably a few names that I left off. Um, but the Houston Rockets are a very, very deep team, and they have a scheme that works for them. And, and, and all their players fit into their system. And I just really don't see there being any, anything that – that the, that the Minnesota Timberwolves are going to be able to do to get this thing past five games. But if they are to get it past five games, as I'm going to go back to it, they have to be able to stop the pick and roll. The pick and roll is something that James Harden and or Chris Paul has been running all season with the Houston Rockets, and this pick and roll is deadly. And, it, as, and as, I'm, as, I'm, as we're about to go to the film, you're going to see that this pick and roll has many different um, options that can be exploited out of it. It's not just one thing. And, and, and it's up to James, ha James Harden and Chris Paul to make the right read. And so far this year, they've done just that. So let's go right to the film to show you what Minnesota is going to be dealing with in these playoffs. And if they, wanna, if they want this thing to go past five games or four or five games, they're going to have to do a much better job than what these teams in the film did to stop this pick and roll. Let's go to it. Now these pick and rolls are called the Spain pick and roll. There's going to be a couple of different actions that happen here. Notice how P.J. Tucker sets the ball screen for Chris Paul, but then notice as he rolls, Eric Gordon is setting a screen on P.J. Tucker's man, but then P.J. Tucker recognizes that and then screens Eric Gordon's man. Boom, he executes. Now in this set, you've got Clint Capella coming up to set a ball screen, a pick and roll for Chris Paul. And as it rolls here, he sets the screen. But notice how James Harden sets the screen on Clint Capella's man, forcing Paul George to watch the lob. And uh, Russell Westbrook then is now covering James Harden, which leaves Chris Paul wide open, and he executes the shot. Now in this action right here, once again, Tariq Black is coming up to set the on-ball screen for Chris Paul. And Luke Mba Mute then sets the screen on Tariq Black's man, leaving him wide open. And Chris Paul recognizes that. Easy bucket. Once again, but only this time, it's James Harden that is going to have the high ball screen set for him. So you see Clint Capella coming up to set the screen. And then P.J. Tucker then sets the screen on Clint Capella's man causing uh, Joffrey Laverne and Brandon Paul to both get stuck on this screen, allowing Harden to now get around the corner and putting Davis Bertans in a tough position, and Harden gets all the way to the basket. And that is, um, those are essentially what the um, uh, Timberwolves are going to be dealing with um, the entire series. So as you saw on all four of those 
actions, you, it was the same action, but it, there was a different result that resulted from those uh, pick and rolls. And, um, and uh, this is what um, the Minnesota Timberwolves are going to be dealing with. So it's almost like pick your poison because Chris Paul and James Harden, they've been reading this thing perfectly the majority of the season, if not all season. And that's a big reason why James Harden is going to win uh, the MVP because they, they've been reading this thing. And uh, when, you, when, you, when you really look at that action and the pick and roll and then basically the screener having a screen set for him, um, that is something that is really going to be tough for any team uh, to uh, stop. So um, good luck to the Timberwolves. I really wish it for them, but I don't see this thing going past five games. How long do you guys see this series going and uh, who do you have winning? I'm out.